Okay, welcome to office hours. It looks like nobody is going to join me. So I'm going to use this time to take the practice quiz, practice logic quiz too. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the practice quiz and sort of think out loud as I answer the questions. I recommend having pen and paper when you take these quizzes or even printing out the quizzes, especially for the unit two logic stuff. Okay, so let's start with question one. So this is hopefully a familiar question since we've been working on this kind of problem since week one. So this is a basic symbol game problem. See, I think I can write on this. So if we just exchange X, Y, and Z, okay, this pen isn't super good, but okay. So now working from inside to outside, F and f dot t f and t that'll be f we've got a conditional if f then t we know that that is t disjunction f or t only one disjunct needs to be true for a disjunction to be true so that's t so now we've figured out that t is what's inside the parentheses the brackets. It's got a tilde out front, so we're looking at the negation of t, which is f, which ultimately, now we've got these two to look at. We've got f or f, final answer f. Question two, consider the following statement and determine how many atomic statements it contains and how many rows, not including the header row, the columns our truth table will need. So when we count atomic statements, we're just counting how many different letters are there. A and not A are not both atomic statements. A is an atomic statement. Not A is the negation of A, which means it is compound. So A and Z are the only atomic statements here. So this is going to be two. Now, number of rows. The number of rows depends on the number of atomic statements. Once you have figured out the number of atomic statements, you know the number of rows. If there's one atomic statement, that means the only possible truth values it could have are T or F. So there would be two rows. If you have two atomic statements, there are four possible truth values it could have. So here's one way to think about why that is, just in case this helps. So imagine we've got P and Q as our two atomic statements. P is either true or false. Now assume P is true. Q has two options. It could also be true or false. And when P is F, Q could be true or false. So this is, if you look at this sort of tree diagram, like this is an option, the TT case, this is an option, the TF case, FT, FF, which is really how we get this T, T, F, F, T, F, T, F setup here that we've been using. Okay, so we know now that we've got the two atomic statements and if there's two atomic statements, you're gonna have four rows. Now, how many columns will we need? 
So we know we're gonna need columns for the two atomic statements, A and Z. We know that we're going to need a column for not A, that's in there. A or not A, that is a statement. And then finally, the whole statement, A or not A, then Z. So A or not A would be in the brackets, then Z. Now to double check our work, what we can do is start, so the last column should be the statement that we're interested in. Then every part of that statement should be in the table. So Z needs to be in the table, check, that's already in the table. And then this section, A or not A, what's in the parentheses here, this needs to be in the table, and it's right here, so check. Now for this statement, in order to figure out the truth value for A or not A, we need to know the truth values of its parts. Are they both in the table? Well, A is right here, and not A is right here, so check. Not A needs to have A in the table. Well, A is already in the table. So going back through and double checking that all the parts are in the table before the holes is a way to do it. So now that's one, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna put five. Okay, which of the following are true of this table? Select all that apply. Okay, so let's start by looking at the final column. How many atomic statements are there? There's two P and Q and they should be in alphabetical order. We've got P and Q, and they are in alphabetical order. So that checks out. Okay. Now for, again, starting here, each part should be in the table. So is there a not P in the table? Check, that's good. Is there a Q or P in the table? Yes, there is, check. Now let's look at Q or P. Is that in the table? Yep, Q and P are both in the table. Not P, P's in the table. Okay, all the columns are present. That looks good. When there are two atomic statements, there should be four rows. That's looking good. Okay, so I'm just going through and generally looking to see what I see before I've even read these statements. Okay, so are all the atomic statements present? Yes. Are they in alphabetical order? Yes, P comes before Q. Does this table have the correct number of rows? Yes. Columns, we already checked that. The last thing to do is, given the truth values in columns three and four, okay, so we're looking at these columns, are the truth values in column five correct? Okay, so we're looking at column five is a conditional. And the antecedent is Q or P, so this is the antecedent, and not P is the consequent. There is only one case where a conditional is false. The only time it's false is when, so this case, the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. Now, the antecedent and the consequent are not in the same order as the conditional, so we have to be careful to identify the antecedent. So where is the antecedent true and the consequent false, if anywhere? So let's look where, here's the antecedent is true, consequent is false. Okay, so it's going to be false here. Antecedent is true, consequent is false, gonna be false there. True, true, that would be true. Okay, that one checks out. F, T, that would be T. Okay, so it looks like these are not correct. It looks like whoever filled out this table forgot that we care about the antecedent being true and the consequent false. That's when it's false and instead just did it in order. So it looks like they thought this was the TF case, but it's not, that's an FT case. So A, B, C, D, and E are all correct, or and D are all correct, but E is not. So let's check all of those. Okay, which of the following are true of this table? So let's start with the statement that we're given. How many different letters are there? There's only one, P. P is the only atomic statement, but it already, I can see it's got too many rows, but there's one atomic statement and it's P. Are all the, 
columns present? Well, in order for this table to complete, be complete, we would need both conjuncts in the table. So is not P already in the table? Yes, it is. Is P or not P in the table? Yes, it is. So that looks good. Now let's look at this column. Are both P and not P in the table? Yes, they are. How about not P? Is P in the table? Yes, it is. So all the columns are present. That looks good. Let's start reading through these options. Okay, are all atomic statements present? Yes, the only atomic statement is P and that is present. Are columns one and two filled in correctly? No, it looks like what this person has done has treated not P as an atomic statement and filled it in like these are the four combinations of truth values. But not P isn't an atomic statement. It's the negation of P. So anywhere that P is true, not P should be false and vice versa. So they treated it like an atomic statement. That's wrong. Okay, so columns one and two not filled in correctly. Does it have the correct number of rows? No. There's only one atomic statement. Therefore, there are only two possible truth values it could have. It's either true or it's false. It's okay. Does it have the correct number of columns? We went through that. Yes, it does. Now, given the truth values in columns two and three, is four correct? So let's look at four. Four is a conjunction. It's the conjunction of three and two. When is a conjunction false? There's only one, or sorry, true. When is a conjunction true? There's only one way for a conjunction to be true, and that's when both conjuncts are true. So row one is a row where both conjuncts are true, and it's true. They're not both true here, and it's false. They're both true here, but not true here. That's a problem. So this is going to be no. Now what it looks like this person did was just assume that any conjunction is going to be TFFF because in our model case where we have P then Q, P and Q, if you were to set this up in the standard way, you would get TFFF, right? That's the standard column. But this table is just a way of keeping track of the fact that when P and Q are both true, the conjunction is true, and in every other case, it's false. Now, what you would do to figure out this conjunction is look at the two conjuncts. Where are they both true? That's where it's true. And they're also both true on row three, so this should have been true. The number one thing you should do to figure out the truth values in the columns is use the rules, not the schematic diagrams. So just remember that conjunction rule means that a conjunction is only true when both parts are true. That's what you're looking for. Okay, so let's mark these in. We said they're all present. Columns one and two not filled out correctly. It does not have the correct number of rows. It does have the correct number of columns. But given the truth values in two and three, four is not correct. Okay, so we've got two. Okay, so let's fill in this one. So we immediately know how to fill in atomic statements. Whether we're doing one atomic statement, two atomic statements, three atomic statements, the atomic statement columns are always the same. So for a table of two, it goes TF, not TA, TF. How do we determine what goes in not P? Well, not P is the negation of P, so we have to look at the column for P. And we'll use our negation rule. The negation rule says if P is T, then not P is F. If P is F, then not P is T. Okay, let's look at our next column. P or not P. We have to use our disjunction rule. There's only one case where a disjunction is false, and that is when both of the disjuncts, both parts, are false. So let's look at row one. Are they both false here? No. Row two, are they both false here? No. There's no row where they're both false. So that means they must both be true. Let's look at our final column. This is the negation of P or not P. Well, here's P or not P. So if this is true, then the negation of that will be F. 
this is true, the negation of that will be F. Okay, so this table is filled in correctly, but let's also think about it intuitively. What does P or not P say? That's like saying either it is raining or it is not raining. Does it make sense why that statement would be true no matter what? It's either raining or it's not. That statement can't possibly be false, right? And this negation of P or not P says that it's not the case that either it's raining or it's not. So if this if P or not P is true no matter what, then the negation of that will be false no matter what. And actually we could prove, I'll leave this as an exercise to you if you wanted to fill it in, you could prove that this is logically equivalent to P and not P. Right, so that's like saying both it's raining and it's not raining, right? So you could, you've got P here and you've got not P, you could fill this in to show that it has the exact same truth values as not P or not P. So maybe you could convince yourself that those two things mean the same thing intuitively too. Okay, let's move on to question six. So it's a two atomic statement truth table. We know how to fill in the atomic statements for this. They're always the same, T, T, F, F, T, F, T, F. And our goal here is to get every combination of truth values for X and Y. Okay, so our next column here is a conditional statement. There is only one case where a conditional statement is false, and that's the TF case. The TF case is where the antecedent is true, in this case that's Y, and the consequence is false. So is there any row where Y is true and F is false? Row one, Y is true, X is true, so that's not a case. Row two, Y is F, not even in the rowing. Row three, Y is true and F is false. Here's a TF case. And then finally, we've got F and F irrelevant. So we can fill these in. We're gonna have T, T, F, T. And I recommended in a previous homework that you focus on the special case rule in order to rule out human error. So if you focus on the one case where a conditional is false, you only have to look for one thing. Every time you look for something, that's an opportunity to make a stupid mistake. Okay, X or Y. This is a disjunction. A disjunction is the special case is it's only false in one situation, and that is when both of the disjuncts, both parts are false. So let's look at, what are we looking at? We're looking at the columns for X and Y. Those are the parts. So let's look at the parts. Is there any row where both are false? T, 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 F, F, T, F, F. It's the last row. That's the only case where they're false. Every other case is true. So we'll fill that in, T, 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 F. Now this column is the negation of this column, right? It's the negation of X or Y. So for each row, we'll switch the truth value. So where X or Y is T, not X or Y is false. T, F, T, F, F, T. Final column. This is a conjunction. What are the parts? Here's one of the conjuncts, and the other one is the negation of X or Y. So here's the other one. A conjunction has one special case, right? It's only true when both conjuncts are true, and on every other row, in every other case, it's false. So are there any rows where both parts, both conjuncts are true? Row one, we've got TF. Row two, it's TF. Row three is FF. Here we have it. Here's row four, that's a TT row. So it's only on row four where this will be true. Okay, question seven. So this one, our atomic statements are filled in for us. So we don't have to worry about that. It's a joint truth table case, which means we're putting all of our statements into one table so we can go on to answer questions about this. This should be familiar from homework. Okay, so let's start by filling in this table. 
for this this sort of two-parter question, it's extra important to get the table right. So definitely do this one carefully and double check your work because if the table's incorrect, you're gonna not get question A correct. Okay, so not A. That is the negation of A. So wherever A is true, not A will be false. So we're looking at column one. It's T, F, T, F, F, T, F, T. Not B, that's the negation of B here. So where B is T, we've got F. It's F, we got T. And a T. Okay. A and B. That's a conjunction. We have to look at the columns for A and B. A conjunction is only true in one case where both parts are true. We've got TT, TF, FT, FF. Only row one are they both true. Every other row, at least one was false. A or B. A disjunction is only false when both are false. So let's look for the row where they are both false. Oh, it's the last row. That's the only one. So that will be F. Everything else will be T's. That's the negation of A or B. That's the negation of this column right here. So wherever this is T, this will be F. T, F, T, F, F, T. And finally, we have not A and not B. So now we have to look at these columns. A conjunction is only true when both conjuncts are true. So we're looking for any row where not A and not B are both true. On row one, they're both false. Row two, FT. Row three, TF. Row four, TT. Hey, there's one where they're true. Okay, that table is now filled in correctly. So we can use it to answer questions in the next set here. So use the truth table above to answer the following questions. And important, we're just using Y or N because this is auto-graded. If you write out yes or no, it won't mark it correct. Okay, so our statements one and two equivalent. What does that mean? That means they have the same truth value on every row. So we can already see here's row two where one is F and the other is T. So no, they don't have the same truth value in every row. They're not equivalent. They're true or false in different cases. And let's think about this intuitively. A and B means A and B. It means and, right? And the wedge means or. So to say that I have a cat and a dog says something different from I have a cat or a dog. And what makes them different is when are those statements true? To say that I have a cat and a dog, that's only true when I have both. Say I have a cat or a dog, I only need at least one for that to be true, or both. I could, both would make it true as well. And that's why when they're both true, the or is true and so is the and, but or is also true when I only have one, right? The only way an or is false is if I don't have either. So what makes these statements true is different, and that is why they have the different truth values and are not equivalent. Okay, are statements three and four equivalent? Well, let's look at their truth values on each row. FF, same, FF, same, FF, same, TT, same. Yes, they have the same truth value in every row, they're equivalent. And you could probably convince yourself they mean the same thing. So to say not A and not B, that says I don't have a cat and I don't have a dog. No cats or dogs had by me. What does not A or B mean? That means it's not the case that I have either. So if you take that negation away, that says I have a cat or a dog, and the negation says it's not the case that I have either, right? Which is to say no cats and no dogs. So these things mean the same thing in the sense that they are true or false in exactly the same situations. Okay, does statement one imply statement two? Is there a row where statement one is true and T is F? If you find a TF case, that means no implication. So if you find a TF case, then one doesn't imply two. So is there any row where one is true and two is F? So they're both T here, F, T, 
FT, FT. There is no row where statement one is true, but two is false. So yes, one implies two. And let's think about that intuitively. To say that I have a cat and a dog, that mean if that's true, then it's also true that I have at least one, right? If I have both, then I have at least one. It follows. Okay. Does statement two imply statement one? Is there any row where two is true, but one is false? We've got a TT case. Here's a TF case. On row two, two is T, but one is F. That's a TF case. That means that two does not imply one. And that makes sense intuitively, right? To say that I have either a cat or a dog does not imply that I have both. It's possible that I have one or the other, but not both. In fact, that's true. I have one and I don't have both. So two does not imply one. Does three imply four? Is there any row where three is true and four is false? No. And if you think about it, that's because they're equivalent. How could they have different truth values on any row when they, the meaning of equivalent is they have the same truth value on every row. They mean the same thing. So if one is true, the other has to be true. Okay, do statements one and two jointly imply statement three? We're still talking about exactly the same concept. We're just looking at more than one column now. So to ask, do statements one and two imply three? Now the T case is one and two. A TF case will be one and two are both true, but three is F. That will be the TF case. So is there any row where one and two are both true, but three is F? And the first row is such a case. True, true, F. So one and two don't imply three. Okay, how about do three and four imply one? Is there any row where these are both true? Let's look for that first, F, 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 F. Oh, it's the fourth row. Is there any row where these are both true and yet one is false? Yeah, that's a row. That is one where that shows us no implication. How about do one, two, and three jointly imply four? Is there any row where one, two, and three are all true? T, T, F. F, T, F, T, F, F. There is no row where these three things are all true. That means there's no TF row, right? There is no case where we've got T, 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 and yet four is F. Since there's no TF case, that means yes implication. The TF case is a problem. You find a problem, no implication. If you don't find a problem, and we didn't, then yes implication. Okay, translations. Now, hint, since I constructed the truth table for you, normally when I give a pen and paper version of this quiz, I give you this and set up your own truth table, but because I wanted to auto grade it, I made the truth table for you, which means you can kind of double check your work by looking ahead to see what's in the truth table. And the premises and conclusion are going to be in the truth table. So that's a big hint. Okay, but let's, let's do it the honest way. Okay, so use the colored bolded words, you know, to, to help you decipher the, the text, but I'm going to start by copying this. And I find that if you just make sure you start above the table and cop, bring the thing down all the way. It should copy and paste nicely. We'll see if that's true. Yeah, so got the whole thing. If you start above, if you start at the C, for some reason it won't copy. Okay, so what, what are our atomic statements? So we've already highlighted all of the operator words. If you have neither a cat nor a dog, then you don't have a dog. And you don't have a dog, thus you have a cat. So to say you have neither a cat or a dog, that's it's not the case you have either a cat or a dog, having a cat or a dog, those are the atomic statements. Also hint C or D, right? So let's see B, I have a cat and D, B, I have a dog. 
Okay, next we need to figure out, translate the argument into, let's see if I can pause this video, my cat is being loud. Okay, so we've got our atomic statements. The first thing to do to translate the argument in English into an argument in symbolic notation is to start with the conclusion. Always start by identifying the conclusion when you do any kind of argument analysis question for this class. So thus tells us that the conclusion follows. The conclusion is you don't have a cat. So if C is I do have a cat, then not C is the conclusion. So we know that much. Okay, then there's the rest here. If you have neither a cat nor a dog, then you don't have a dog. And indeed, you don't have a dog. So there's two, it's clear that there's two sentences. And when you're doing the translations to symbolic notation, you don't have to take apart conjunctions, just translate sentence by sentence. Okay, so the next step, once you've decided that each sentence is going to be a premise here, is to figure out what the main operator is. And hopefully the bolded colored bits help you here. So the if and the then go together. So you know that the main operator here, it's gonna be, there is an if then, there's gonna be a first part and a second part. And they should be a complete statement. So the first part is you have neither a cat nor a dog. And so if I was writing this in pen and paper, I might write that out. I, you have neither a cat nor a dog. I write that in English here. And then what's in the second part? You don't have a dog. That one's nice and clear. That's just not the. Okay, so we know the neither nor part. That one's a little bit tricky. Let's save that for a moment here. What's sentence two? You don't have a dog. Okay, so that one's clear. That's not D. So I guess the last bit is just doing the translation. You have neither a cat nor a dog and sticking it in the antecedent here. So what is you have neither a cat nor a dog? There's two translations for neither nor. One is to think of it as not and then put in parentheses here, either or. Or think of it as not and not. So the first one, not either or, that would be, it is not the case that I have either a cat or a dog, and then I have either a cat or a dog is easy to translate. So we could get rid of that. So I know that I'm gonna have a conditional statement here. And I know that it ends in not D and I know that this is not D, and I know that this is, what was it, not C? So now I just have to do the neither nor, and I said I'm gonna do not either or, so if I put the not out front, and then inside I have either C or D. That's one way to do it. I also could have done not C and not D, horseshoe, not D. And importantly, the tilde, when does it go inside of things or outside of things? The tilde attaches to whatever it's closest to. So if it's attached to parentheses, it applies to everything inside of the parentheses. If it's attached to a single letter, it applies to just that letter. And it's really important to use parentheses to disambiguate things. So if you have two operators like this, there should definitely be parentheses somewhere. So either of these is correct. 
Okay, finally, let's fill in the truth table here. So we've got two atomic statements, C and D. We filled, it's always start with the atomic statements and they are always the same. T, T, F, F, T, F, T, F, All right, the next thing we should do is not C, that's the negation of C, so we look at the column for C, where it is T, we've got F, T, F, F, T, F, T, not D, we have to look at this column, so we get F, T, F, T, not C and not D, that's a conjunction, and these are the two conjuncts, so these are the columns we have to look at. A conjunction is only true when both Conjuncts are true, so where is that? We've got F, 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 T, T, F, only the last row. Are they both true? So they'll be both true here. F, F, F. Now finally, we have our last statement column. It is a horseshoe. The antecedent is not C and not D. That's the antecedent. Maybe put an A on it if you need to remember. And then not D is the consequent. So a horseshoe is false only in one case. That's when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. Where is that? Here we've got an FF case, we've got an FT case, FF, TT. There is no case where the antecedent is true but the consequent is false. What does that mean? means there's no case where this is false. So this is true in every case. And you might be able to work out that that's the kind of statement that is necessarily true if you think about it. It's kind of like saying, since not D is in both, that's kind of like saying if P then P. If it's raining, then it's raining. Yes, indeed, right? There's no way that this could be T and this could be F because they have the same truth value, right? So you're never gonna get the TF case. Okay, so now that we have filled in the main part of the table, let's fill in these parts. So recall our final goal here is to figure out if this is a valid or invalid argument. And it's valid if the premises jointly imply the conclusion. So is there any row where both premises are true, but the conclusion is false? So what we're going to do is just star all the rows where both premises are true and X the ones where they're not. Row one, not a case. Row two, both true. Um, row three, not both true. And row four, both true. So the minute you've put in X's, immediately go to the other side and type an I for irrelevant. We don't care about those rows. There, is, there are two rows we have to look at. So now we have to decide, are these cases where the premises are both true and the conclusion is true, or where the conclusion is false? So T, T, F, that is a problem. That's a counter example row, but fill in all the rows. Here we've got T, 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 that's a not a problem row. If you find a problem row, a counter example row that shows you that the premises don't jointly imply the conclusion, and therefore the argument is not valid. This is invalid, spell it out. This row, the fact that there is one row where the premises are both true and the conclusion is true, that doesn't tell us the argument is good. That just tells us it's possible everything is true, but we're looking, do the premises guarantee the conclusion is true? And because row two exists, the answer is no. That's complete. Okay, we've got a slightly longer one. I'm gonna start by copy and pasting. I'm also going to just copy all this. Let's keep scrolling. Okay, so. Fluffy, I'm just gonna start by identifying the conclusion. What's the conclusion? From these three premises, it follows that, that suggests that. This is the conclusion, okay? So here we've got 
conclusion. First, second, and third helps us figure out that these are premises. Indeed, that's like the function of using this kind of thing is to make it clear that you're listing premises. So let's just list them in order. One, sure, just keep them straight. Two, three, and this is the conclusion. Okay, once we've put the argument into standard form, it makes sense to figure out what the atomic statements are. And I've given you a hint, there's three, A, D, and N, and I also used bold to help you figure out what those might be. So here we've got Fluffy is either a three-headed dog or an acromantula. And so we've got Fluffy is either one thing or another. Let D be Fluffy is a three-headed dog. So let's put that in here. That's A. All right, and the other was Fluffy is an acronym. All right, so we can start partial translating here. So this is, this one's pretty easy. This is D or A. Fluffy is not a Norwegian Ridgeback dragon. So not means compound. So the atomic statement will be Fluffy is a Norwegian Ridgeback Dragon. Okay, so this one says Fluffy is not. Oh, I accidentally copied and pasted too much. Okay, so that one's nice and simple. That's good. Fluffy is not an N. That's just not N. If that is a operator word we should pay attention to, was that not highlighted up here? Oh yeah, I didn't bold the if then in this text, but hopefully I'll figure out there is an if then anyways. So this is a conditional if blank, then blank. So we know that this is gonna be some kind of horseshoe statement. We just need to figure out what the first and second part is. So if blank Fluffy is not a Norwegian Ridgeback Dragon, so that's not in, then he is not an Aphromantia, so that's gonna be not A. And then finally we have Fluffy is a three-headed dog, that's just our atomic statement D. So now that we've figured it out, we can put it in the table. And I recommend doing the partial translations if you find this complicated at all. Okay, let me just have This was D or A. All right, and then we can double check our work by seeing if we got the premises and conclusion right. So it's premise one, D or A, yes. Premise two, I uh, must have not copied and pasted correctly. Oh, I just wasn't looking at it right. Okay, so the premise two is not N, we've got that. Premise three is if N not A, that's correct. And the conclusion is D, good. So what we transcribed matches the table we've set up for that. So the atomic statements are already filled in for us. So let's just fill in the rest of the table. Not A is the negation of A, so we look at this column and change all the T's to F's. F, 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 T, 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 T. All right, not N, that's the negation of this column here. So wherever we've got a T, we change it to an F. And this one is alterating. So Go through it quickly. D or A. 
we have to look at the first two columns. But remember, there's only one case where an or statement, a disjunction is false, and that's when both disjuncts are false. So let's only look for the FF case. And that is the last two rows only. So that's gonna be our FF case. Everything else is T. All right, now we have a conditional statement. The antecedent and the consequent are not in the same order as the conditional, so that's important to pay attention to. So we're looking for the one special case, the only time this will be false is when the antecedent is true, that's N, not in here, and the consequent is false, that's not A. So we're looking for a TF row. This is an FF. Here's a TF row, antecedent's true, consequent is false, so that's gonna be F. Here's FF, here's another TF row, TF. And we've got FT, TT, FT, TT. So those are the only F rows. We'll fill in Ts for everything else. All right, we've got the table filled in. Now we just need to star every row where all the premises are true. Nope, 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 TT, nope, TTT. Here's our first one. So we'll star this. F, F, T, nope, T, F, T. So there's only this one. We'll put X's and all the others. Okay, which means we can immediately go over here and put I's in all of the ones that have X's. These are all irrelevant. The only row that matters is this one. This is the only case where the premises are all true. Is the conclusion also true here? Yes, that's not a problem. Since we found no problem rows, no counterexamples are the problems. We found no counterexample rows. That shows us the argument is valid. It's impossible for the premises to all be true and the conclusion false. So let's type up valid. And that completes the quiz. If I were taking the quiz and I have some extra time, I might go back and review my answers. How much time do we have? We did it in about 48 minutes. So we've got 10 minutes to spare, filling stuff in. Okay, let's submit it and see how we did. All right, we got looking good so far. Uh-oh, looks like something's wrong. Under. I have it auto rated wrong. I take all of the quizzes that I've written here myself to double check for these kinds of errors. So let's see. But if you ever think you have an error, you can feel free to reach out and ask me to take a look at it. I'm happy to. But I do double check them. Okay, so it looks like it was one, two, three, four, the fifth one. Now, does three imply four? That should be yes. And I remember saying it was yes. And I remember explaining that uh, you couldn't possibly have the two different truth values. I must have just typed the wrong letter as I was saying yes. So this is definitely a yes. Three implies four. There is no row where three is T and four is F. And there couldn't possibly because they're equivalent. So of course one implies the other. So it looks like I typed no, but I meant to type yes. That's why we double check our work. Okay, so that completes our going through the practice quiz together. Hopefully this was helpful.